All right, Nona. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Andrew. This is my beautiful wife, Nona, who is giving me angry looks right now for some reason. For some reason? For some reason. I don't know why. For existing? I've never done anything wrong a day in my life. I'm an angel. Anyways, um, so... You might be able to tell we flipped the room around. We've got a little bit better lighting. We've got the cameras turned back up to 4K because I figured out some other settings that would make this look and feel a little bit better. Um, so hopefully if you're watching this, the streams on YouTube or wherever else, hopefully they're better. We should also have some noise reduction in our microphones that should be eliminating any background sounds. And there are mowers today. So hopefully... This will eliminate their sound. Remains to be seen. Maybe this episode just goes into the dumpster. We'll find out. But it sounded good when we tested everything. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah. We removed the echo finally. I had to install... Um, actually, Cooper would love the name of this. It's called Voice Meter Banana. Banana, banana, banana. banana. Yeah. Um, which combines our audio tracks from our microphones which are two distinct tracks, combines them into one for stereo sound rather than having two stereo microphones, which was giving us that reverb. I probably could have figured out another way. There's a million different things on search and AI and everybody apparently has a different way to fix this problem. But now it's running through voice meter banana. Banana, banana, banana. Through NVIDIA broadcast. And then it's being captured in OBS Studio. For anybody wondering, that's how I'm managing this with shit mics. $60 mics off Amazon. Again, these microphones were bought um, or purchased for video conferencing for meetings. Just so that I had something. Not necessarily for this show. So eventually we will get better microphones. And some sort of mixer and stuff like that. But for right now we're doing it all in software. Um, we flipped the entire office around the entire set um so now we can have the windows open which adds to some of this better lighting we're still using all of the lights we were using before because we still need them but now we've got natural light coming in and illuminating our faces so we don't look orange or blue or any other spectrum and yeah spectrum spectrum my spectrum my brain spectrum um why don't you tell me something that you've watched or learned or seen in the last couple of days or so? Just something interesting. I know you try to identify with almost everything that you consume in media. So did you watch something with Charlotte last night that you identified with? Did you read something? Did you housewives of... Champaign, Illinois, teach you anything? Champaign, Illinois. I haven't watched anything or done anything. But I did open notes in my phone for the first time in, I don't know, several months when I was jotting down ideas of what we should discuss. And I happened to stumble upon the notes that I wanted you to pass on to your buddy Lance for Thigh Huggers. And I was curious... Has anybody ever created ball cooling technology for shorts? Yeah, there's literally a commercial with a guy. It's like for boxers. Right, but for shorts, not boxers. You free ball. Yeah. Right, and your biggest complaint is, my balls is hot. Okay, and there's nothing that you can add that's going to make it cool. It's the lack of. that You got right. to get, get that so ventilation. It's like the, it's like the mesh? dish is drying. Can you have mesh no. that's like no nothing cover nothing so you can't see nothing. but nothing that way you stop complaining about my balls is hot. There's nothing. I bet there is something. No ice pack, sure. Mm. Then it would look like you're wearing a diaper, though. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> So what have you consumed that you can bring to the table, media-wise? You're the one 
who provides my daily news. And you trust me? No, I don't. <laughs> I just let you talk and fill the void. You trust me? I don't trust anybody. You trust me? I don't trust anybody. You trust me? You know how I know you trust me? Why? You haven't shot me yet? It's because I've never shot anybody. I've never shot a gun. Never shot anybody. <laughs> You're not the first yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Um, well, well, like I was showing you that screenshot I sent you, there's a documentary coming out about child abuse in Nickelodeon Studios, which is kind of something that everybody probably could have assumed. It's hard enough to try and get the kids to coordinate on a cheeky commercial shoot in the front yard without somebody complaining or crying or having a mental breakdown or wanting to come back inside or not wanting to participate because they didn't get to do the exact thing they wanted to do in the exact moment. Um, from my understanding, it is not regarding the parents. I'm not, I'm not saying the parents. I'm saying that I understand. Directors, producers, et cetera. Yeah, I'm, I'm not drugging saying. Drugging the cast and playing with them at their own whim. I don't know. I didn't know anything about that. It's. It sounded there. There were a handful of Disney and Nickelodeon actors and actresses who have come out in the last couple of years. Who so are you, now over the eighteen mark. You think that's what the documentary is going to be about? I believe so. Okay. I was thinking that it was like work conditions were ridiculous because they kept having to do reshoots. But I, I mean, I'm sure that plays a huge role in it. And also parents who are now relying exclusively on this as their sole income and essentially pimping out their children. And so that is exacerbating the issue of producers and directors and the other adults so, in the industry taking advantage of the children. So you think that all of these families, organizations, whatever, that the parents are exclusively profiting? Or do you believe that some of them actually... The beginning. So do you... But I've seen, and obviously I don't know actual people's financial status because I've never actually looked into it, but several YouTube channels where the children are essentially the content creators, but mm -hmm. parents are producing or editing or just managing whatever um, they tend to like to tell people that everything is going into a trust they might get a cut and we're supposed to trust yeah that it's going into a trust exclusively they might be getting a cut but then you might also end up with like britney spears parents right exactly <laughs> yes i i believe that there are for every 10 child actors, there's probably one parent who's actually doing the right thing, and the other nine are not. So you don't think that the studios or whoever's negotiating contracts doesn't have something in there? Because I, I would assume they know that at some point, in some way, it could come back on them. I believe, as always, laws are ever-changing, and... I believe in recent years, laws have gone into place to help protect those children. Um, whether that's acted upon all the time, I can't say. So what do, you, what do you think is the actual difference in child labor acting versus literally anything else? Because that seems to be the only acceptable thing other than starting the, at McDonald's at 14. They're in school. And so, therefore, have a tutor at all times, I believe, to do their quote-unquote schoolwork, even if it's on set. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. Interesting. I don't know if there's, like, a certain amount of hours they're not allowed to go over or... Every time I... Any of these shows that I watch or movies or videos or anything like that where there's, like especially when they're like under 10 and the kid is specifically acting in a role. Like it's not, they're, 
you know, it's not actually their parents or whatever. Like, how does a kid like get to that point? Like how, how long do you have to actually work with your kid or somebody work with your kid to get them to the point where they can differentiate real life and acting life? I don't know. A lot start when they're infants. So some probably genuinely don't really understand what real life is. They've grown up on set. So we should just replace them all with robots. Stop. Right? No. Yeah, because you can... Terrible. Imagine how much easier it would be to film a movie if the toddler that you were trying to film was robotically controlled and you only had to do one take. Imagine how easy your life would be if I was a robot and you were married to a robot instead. No, that'd be boring. See? It's the same concept. Well, it's not because when you're filming a movie or a TV show or whatever, when you have the baby screaming and doesn't want to cooperate, you either have to swap out the baby or come mm -hmm. back to it later. That is true. Replace it with a robot. Stop. It's going to happen. They're already, everything is already CGI anyways. Eventually, like the, the, the big name directors want to do most of their stunts and VFX and stuff like that with practical effects. They want to do it in real life. They don't want to put a CGI baby in. They don't want to put a CGI tiger in. They want to have something that the actor can actually interact with. All the superhero movies. Imagine how much different that'll be when they don't have to, for the Hulk, where uh, Mark Ruffalo's like your height, and they have to tape a stick to the back of his head with the Hulk's face all the way up here so the actors know what to engage with. They don't want to talk to Mark Ruffalo. They want to talk to the Hulk's cardboard face. Mm. See? So imagine when they can replace that is there the the actors still doing the the facial motion capture? Right. But they're Wearing not sensors to pick up. Yeah. Well, a lot of that's going away now. Oh really? Yeah. See, I'm behind the times. Well, the camera technology. There's so much depth data being collected too. So, and there's cameras and stuff have lidar, radar, like these have lidar for dot projector, like your phone has for face unlock and face ID. It's, it doesn't use the camera. The camera is just there for you to see what it sees. It's actually using distance data from the laser to make sure that it's not a piece of paper. Like it can, it knows the distance to your tip of your nose, your eyes, your forehead. It basically makes a 3D map of your face. And that's how it knows if it's you. It's not the picture, it's the 3D map of your face. Okay. If you get your nose chopped off, it's not going to recognize you. <laughs> and I'm screwed. Yeah. Or uh, during COVID when I gained about 10 pounds and my face got a little puffy, kept saying, face not recognized, face not recognized, face not recognized. There you go. Siri was an asshole to me. Told me to lose weight. Okay. <laughs> Thought this cough was going to be on today. I'm running on coffee exclusively. I got like no sleep last night. Yeah, you woke up really early. I think yeah. you did. At 1.30 a.m. That's what time you got out of bed? Yeah. Where'd you go? Out here. You just sat on the couch? I tried to be quiet so you could keep sleeping. I did not think it was that early. I knew that you left. Nope. Not because of me. I was quiet. I was very quiet. You were snoring directly in my face. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't snore. I've never snored. It was horrible. Never happened. Every fucking night. Never happened. Um. Okay. This is something that I've been thinking about for a while. Oh, yeah. I'm scared. You talk about all the time how you don't like listening to YouTube of any kind. Even when it's something educational and practical and which is the majority of the content that i consume oh yeah yeah and you're like it's too loud and then you go and sit there and listen to these retards on real housewives scream at each other about nonsense that's completely made up what's the difference 
I guess background noise to you is different than background noise to me. But it's not background noise to me. I'm consuming the content. Mm. So why do you prefer screaming when it's in the background? I guess relatable, as you say it, screaming is better than me feeling overwhelmed by you consuming all of your nonsensical YouTube. So watching John Malucky build a really badass table. Or yeah, I would say actually he's the only one that you watch that I can tolerate watching even, even in the same room. Practical engineering, talk about civil engineering projects or real engineering or um, real science, talk about World War II apparatus and engineering or the development and uh, evolution of animals because that's the majority of what I consume are those kinds of shows whatever you say it is now on the other hand the kids like the stuff where they're screaming however I just saw uh, within the last week or two, Mr. Beast is now like, I guess, leading, pioneering, whatever, and is ex explicitly asking other creators to stop the screaming. Are you talking about like people jumping to the screen and, ah! Pay attention to me. Yeah, that like the whole the whole video where they're just like screaming. Yeah, I can't no see that. yeah. So the one that started it is now asking people to stop. He also has the most subscribers on YouTube and has the most influence over YouTube as far as algorithms and what people follow and chase and try and recreate. Coincidentally, our colors, like I showed you the other day, are pretty similar to his logo colors, which that was just completely coincidental because you picked out the color palette. It wasn't even the colors that I started with. I said your original was just too chaotic, and you know, I don't like chaos. I want a little bit more calm. They're basically baby colors. Yes, that's exactly what they look like. You only gave me two options, so... There wasn't much to choose from. Well, the style from like the pop art era and things like that have multiple colors and... I've never liked pop art. Okay. But you still like that. You, you like everything else from that era. And you like the Font Diner logo that... Um, What's her name? Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yes. Marvelous. Marvelous Miss Maisel. I hope that this has been recording our audio this whole time. Oh, goodness. Do you think it has been? I don't know. I'm scared to find out. Should I check? I think you should. I think it's okay. I actually don't know. Hopefully. No, it's... Wait, what? Is it? Should I pause it and check? I already said yes. Okay, I'm going to pause it. I checked it and we're all good. Are you sure? I'm sure. Started from the end. Or started from the, the bottom. Now we're here? I don't know. How's that stupid song go? I don't know what song you're talking about. I don't know. One of those one of those people with the music that we don't listen to. One of those people with the music we don't listen to? Yeah. Do you see what I do? <laughs> Just guessing what's going on in his head at all times. Guessing. You gotta keep them on their toes. Obfuscation at all times. In every facet of life. On that note, let's talk about music. Okay, let's talk about music. How we have complete opposite musical. It's not even opposite. 
I like calm music. You like angry oh, music. None of the music I listen to is angry. It's there's, extremely. There's not a single angry lyric ever. There are very happy songs from happy people talking about happy things. Okay. Whatever you say. It is what I say. Metal, metalcore, heavy metal, rock. Those are calm, soothing songs to me. There's nothing calm and soothing about your music. But it calms my mind. And I can focus and think clearly on a single subject or topic without straying from that thought. So you're saying that in the world of your music, you would be able to work in a much more focused and driven way if that's what was playing. Yeah. So your music is like your daily Ritalin dose? Kind of in a way, yeah. I need you to explain further. I don't know. Um, didn't we watch something recently where like somebody needed music to like calm and focus? I feel like it's actually been done in a lot of like I'm I'm seeing various different like movies and shows where that's been the case. I don't think that kid in um what we just watched needed it. I think he was just doing it because that's their culture. The the money counter from the gentleman. I don't think he like needed it, but they were like he was like the oracle or you know, whatever. But he didn't when they took the headphones away from him and they were like threatening him and all that other stuff, like he didn't seem like he didn't he didn't seem like um oh my god, what's it called? Um Starts with an A. It's on the spectrum. Asperger's. Yeah. He didn't have any of the typical, like, tics and mannerisms of somebody with Asperger's. The, the tics and mannerisms aren't an Asperger's. People with Asperger's tend to do, like, they tend to, like, guard. They tend to always keep their arms really close. Um, Boston Legal. You. You don't have to check every single box. I didn't say you had to check every single box. I'm just saying he didn't do anything. Well, he just seemed like a normal person who liked listening to music. No, he he even stated that numbers were his thing. And he needed to get into his own world, essentially, and kind of push the entire world out. But he's not even doing anything with numbers. He's using a machine. Well, he was hired into the dark world, essentially, to be their accountant because of how focused on numbers he was. And he kind of pushed that out by turning on his music. For some reason, and this might be true, I don't know, I don't actually think it is, but I think Rain Wilson is the one that played the character with Asperger's in um, Boston Legal. I never saw Boston Legal, so I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm just thinking that because I keep thinking of Dwight. But he was like a character exactly like Dwight. But he like, he would always have his hands on his thighs, mm -hmm. sitting and walking, standing, everything. Like, yeah, just always guarding, but very, you know, well-spoken, articulated. That's one character in one show. Right. You can't but he did other things. That's just the most memorable of everything like that's the main physical characteristic is that he always was like that i understand that but anything on the autism spectrum you can just be some of not all to still have that diagnosis so what do you think i am we all know you're autistic okay he's just 
I do say so. Okay. What about Cooper, then? You say he's so much like me. I've always said that he's on the spectrum as well. So how come neither of us have ever been tested or diagnosed? Would you like to go to the doctor and get diagnosed? How would that benefit anybody? Exactly. Um, That's the point. It doesn't. Well, in your childhood, having an understanding of it, don't you think that would help him adapt? In the, because you, you claim that he's mature enough to understand a lot of these things and that he recognizes them when you tell them to him. So do you think that it would benefit him and his ability to transition to a regular, more or less regular school next year? Um, eighth grade going into ninth grade is not necessarily the time that you need to pursue a diagnosis. It would be when your child is four years old and you're needing assistance of them going into the public school. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying he needs to go into like special ed. I'm saying, don't you think that if you claim that he's mature enough to understand these concepts and that he has the ability to adapt and recognize the situation and, and make changes on the fly, wouldn't it be beneficial to him to know? You think he makes changes on the fly? Well, he has to make entire spreadsheets going down the list. No, I'm talking like attitude, demeanor, stuff like that, like the way that he talks to and treats other people. And the person that you met three and a half years ago is not the same person. He's also he going through puberty. You keep you stick to how these kids were when they were younger. They're going through personality development. They're going to change, and you don't want them to change. No, what I'm getting at is he has spent the last eight years in school learning how to grow, learning how to change. It has taken him eight years in a forced public situation to assimilate and adapt whereas most children are able to do it that first year so time is all that he has had but you don't think that him knowing and understanding would be beneficial in any way at this point it could just essentially be an ego blow rather than anything else why well the first time i said it to you how did you feel i didn't care because you have no feelings <laughs> and maybe he wouldn't care either i he also going through puberty as you said but I... anything that could be taken as a diss or um anything that would be constituted as negative in any way could be misconstrued. But the, in in, the infighting and banter and stuff like that when you're in the military aids in the not caring about inconsequential things like that. Okay. Like what does, what, what does you making that comment do? It doesn't change anything in my life. I'm already an adult going on 40 in a couple of years. Like, why would I care? I can't change anything from the past. So. Right. So put that into Cooper also. But he has his future mm -hmm. at stake. And he's already decided on a career path that doesn't involve other humans. And well, it totally does involve other humans. Mm -hmm. Everything involves other humans. In a... There's always... He, there's no... He doesn't know the exact job or the role or position or company or anything. He has a concept in his mind. He could work for some biomedical engineering firm and literally be in a warehouse with a hundred other people that he has to directly interact with every second of every day. And he wouldn't choose that job? You don't know that. He might not have a choice. The positions and jobs that are available now will be completely different than they are in eight years. True. So he needs to be able to do both in order to be successful. Even if he doesn't like it, his career field might completely change too. I knew, I knew that I was going to be 
an architect or some sort of engineer. I knew that in middle school and high school. I knew that I was going to take over my dad's company. I knew those things. That's what I did in school. And I knew I was going to do that. And I didn't. So, speaking from somebody with experience, because we live in the is world, not the all world. So it's our job to help him understand that the potential is there, that he might not get the dream job that he wants, or the career that he wants now might change over time, and it might require a completely different set of skills and understanding of what he's going to school for currently. Because it does. Everything, especially in engineering and, and medicine and stuff like that, it's why doctor's office is called a practice. Because they're literally practicing, changing. It's all essentially one big study that's always ongoing. So how would a diagnosis help him? Well, I'm not saying he would do this, but some people use it to excuse away things all the time. I don't think that he would do. I'm just, I'm just saying some people do. They'll, they'll use it to excuse things away. I have this, I have that. It's difficult for me to do this. So like I asked you, how would it help? Him? I know I'm getting to it. It might also potentially open up other opportunities where there are people who are understanding or also have those traits and characteristics where he might fit in better. Where, for example, okay, uh, was it Biddies and Bows? Biddy and Bows? Something yeah. like that? Yeah. So they exclusively hire people with Down syndrome. No, special needs in general. Just, oh, okay. So it's not, okay. But in general, that's all they hire. And it's not like it's skilled labor, but it's something that they can do. It's somewhere that they can go and they don't have to sit at home all day. They can earn money, they can earn a living. They probably still all have to stay with a family member of some sort, but it helps them feel like they're a productive member of society, gives them something to do other than sit at home. And I'm sure that there are large organizations, big organizations that love people like that, not just because they're productive employees, but because he sticks to the rules and when something is defined to him, it takes a lot for that thing to change. So he's going to be the kind of guy that he can go and get a top secret security clearance, work for the Department of Defense or some government role, and he's not going to be the one leaking information to the Chinese or the Russians. You just related Cooper to a special needs person at Biddy and Bose. No, I'm saying that there are people in organizations both that are understanding and also would give preferential treatment to somebody like that. When you're that strict and by the book, some, some places like that, because they want to have a set structure and they don't want anybody questioning. They want to bring... If you want him to get a diagnosis, then you need to go get diagnosed as well. Okay. You can tag team your diagnoses. Okay. Do you guys in the comments think that a diagnosis of any kind would be beneficial if he was diagnosed? Do you think there's any merit to telling him now, waiting till later? Or do we just make a, at home adjustments to help bring That's what I've been doing since he was I'm ask old. I'm asking the commenters their opinion. I'm not asking your opinion. I know your opinion. No, I, I meant the at-home adjustments. I have adjusted his life and my life since he was two years old to accommodate okay. his world. Okay, but I'm asking them what their opinion is. We know what you do. See? Am I right or is she right? Um, but on that note, there might potentially be things that can be learned that help get him back involved with the family? Is it just puberty? Is that is it the privacy and wanting to be away from everybody? Or is it 
you know, something else, understanding those things. Like just going into it blindly, just completely guessing about it, it doesn't help anybody. I'm not saying that I'm the expert, but if you don't have all the information, you also don't have all the tools. Essentially changing variables and trying to figure something out is you won't know the outcome until later in life anyways, but do you think that the way that you were raised was the way that you should have been raised? Well, you say that I'm uncultured. I grew up. Rather, okay, we're not talking about money. We're talking about the way that your parents parented you. Do you think the way that you were raised is the way that you should have been raised? Were you spanked? No. Ever? No. Do you think you should have been? No. Were you grounded? Yes. What did that involve for you? Just going to your room? Yes. Anything taken away? Time taken away? Uh, no special things like you know, going to friends' houses for sleepovers or anything like that. For how long? Depend on what the situation was. A weekend, a week. And how do you think that impacted you? I learned from my mistakes. Do you think that the extent of it was on the extreme scale or? Sometimes. I mean, I was the first child. And so with all first children, case in point, the child we were just speaking of, there's a lot of learning involved regarding the parent and how I was raised is not how my youngest sibling was raised. And we're only six years apart with one other child in between. And each of us were raised completely different because me being the first, I was the experiment. The second one, they let off a little bit. And by the third one, it was a free for all. Do whatever you want. What about you? Well, Cash isn't having a free-for-all. You don't think Cash has a free-for-all? No. Chloe says all the time that he's the baby, and so therefore he is spoiled. Well, you do baby him and Charlotte, and they both know it, and that's their way to seek attention when they don't get to do the things that the older kids get to do. It's not fair. Okay. Add a couple of years to your life and then it'll be fair. They get to stay up later. It's not fair. It's because they're older than you. That's. And then they try and milk it out of you. Okay, 30 extra minutes. I didn't get to use my iPad today. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of extra time. When's the last time they've come down and asked you for extra time on their laptops? Exactly. They don't need the permission. And they know that. And they want to be like the older ones. So if they were raised, if it was only those two, they didn't have the two older siblings, they wouldn't know any different. True. So... They know that the world exists, so their development is, is always going to be different. There's no way to make it the same. They always know, and they're all at the age now where they know what their peers can and can't do and do and don't get away with. They come and tell you all the time, so-and-so is allowed to stay up until this time. So-and-so has this and this and this. So-and-so has a phone, and they're eight years old. That's them telling you that they want the same thing. I'm aware. Yeah. But did, a child as well. But did Cooper and Chloe come home at eight years old asking for those things? Um, Cooper has never cared about what other people have. Chloe has. And yes, Chloe has stayed at home. I think, that's, I think Cooper does and hasn't said it. And now he's starting to vocalize some of that stuff, like the hot sauce thing that we were talking about. He had, he had never, ever, ever once expressed interest in ever even trying hot sauce. But then 
hanging out with his friend and making it themselves. Now he's into it and wants to grow his own peppers and make his own hot sauces and stuff like that. Okay, but that was because he experienced a fun thing and wants to recreate that fun experience. Right. At home. Right. It's not about you're you're taking um a jealousy thing of they have this and I want it as well and misconstruing it into recreating an experience. It's two different things completely. Not necessarily. You don't know how they perceive it. That's how you perceive it. Okay. And they don't really have any way to really articulate that yet. I just don't see how they're the same at all. Okay. It's not, we don't have to see eye to eye. I'm just giving you a different perspective. Just something to think about, consider. What do you think about when uh, he gets to high school and the differing modes of transportation and the other kids express how they're, some, some of them are going to have siblings that go to UNCW or Cape Fear Community College or whatever, and their siblings are dropping them off or their siblings drive to school and they can ride with them to school rather than being picked up on the bus or their parents ex- exclusively continue to drive them. If they're another kid that went to school with him, some parents are going to want their time back and they're going to be like, no, go catch the bus. You can finally do it. Specifically people that he went to school with or other people that go to schools where they have to be driven by their parents. At some point, their parents are going to either one, they're going to want more time back at work to, you know, combat inflation by increasing their income again. Some of them are just going to want to sleep in longer because now you're self-sufficient. You're old enough. You can make your own lunch or take $5 or whatever for your lunch money that day. Would you drive him to school all the way through his senior year? I thought you stated that you were going to give him your truck. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying let's pretend that he doesn't have a driver's license. Are you going to drive him to school all the way through his senior year? Which technically will be a sophomore year of college. The answer is yes. You would? I would. Okay. That is what I signed up for as being his mother. Okay. And not just his mother, but his other three siblings as well. Okay. I'm just asking. I was asking so that the audience could know the answer to that. what I've always done and what I will continue to do until they ask otherwise. What about jobs? Things like that. Once he's in high school and especially on Fridays since he's going to get off early every Friday Mm -hmm. are you going to expect him once he's old enough to get a job somewhere? He already stated he wants to start working as soon as he turns 14 this summer and that's the earliest he can find anywhere that will hire him as 14. Right. I'm pretty sure that's almost universal across the country. He would already which, want to start working right now at 13 if he could. Which brings us back to the child labor stuff. What's the difference? Like why? He started working at 13. Right. But I'm saying why? It was under the table though. Why can you not flip burgers, but you can act? Is it like a discrepancy in, in the income that you can earn? Oh, I was thinking the quote-unquote environment. Like, no, yeah. like, no, think about it. Well, yeah, sure, you have like, but you also have that on a movie right. set. Exactly. That's why I said the quote-unquote environment. They could literally, they could literally act a role. Right. No, I get it. In a movie or TV show. Right. Or the, burgers, but they couldn't actually go flip burgers. Yeah. Yes. You could be a child laborer in a movie. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. I I'm not saying that kids, should, we should not open sweatshops like you. No, that's not what we're saying at all. But I, I think there should be some sort of waiver of me signing off. Yes, he's allowed to work six hours a week or whatever minor amount. Yeah. 
two three hour shifts or something and with the, the local ice cream shop because that's happens to be really close with, to us and hiring with the way that the government and the irs are going with if you gift or make specific income levels like theoretically in a single summer if the kids made too much money they could get in trouble with the irs from a lemonade stand theoretically chloe's gonna be pissed off if you tell her that right but i'm, I'm just she's gonna declare anarchy and say well fuck them i'm going to go make all the lemonade stands and make all the money and i won't declare any of it okay that's lemonade cool. stand drug lord chloe right so that's two very different personalities between cooper and chloe yep yep do i have autism Am I on the spectrum? Yep. <laughs> let's uh let's go back to pop culture media stuff for a yeah. minute. Yeah. So I don't know what it was what it was about. We were talking about Aaron Taylor Johnson the other day, the guy playing Craven, one of the ones that played Quicksilver. Um I guess he's gonna be playing Bond. I thought you told me I thought Idris Elba was up next for it, or that was what fans wanted. But yeah, it looks like Aaron Taylor. And I didn't even know that he was British. I thought it was a requirement that he had to be British. You, uh, you've been saying that for what two years? The Andrew Salbo guy. Yeah. And see, when I take news from you. Well, obviously, different. obviously, it's not that it's not accurate. It's that you and I have no idea what's being negotiated. Michael Scott could be. Oh my! Steve goodness. Steve Carell could be Bond for all we know. His uh, was it Threat Level Midnight? Maybe maybe that was his audition tape. What wasn't he in the movie Get Smart? Yeah, so that was the closest thing to Bond that he'll ever be. Okay. Okay. Um. So anyway, I'm trying to think of what you would have seen him in. You've seen him in some stuff, and you probably just don't remember him. The new Bond. Yeah. Mm, no idea. The name doesn't ring a bell. Who would you like to see as Bond? I don't know. I thought Daniel Craig was pretty good as Bond. I don't think anybody will stand up to him. You don't think Parkour Boy can be beaten by something more modern? Parkour. Yeah. That was... I don't remember the story behind that. You remember that from his first movie, right? I thought you were talking about The Office. We were talking about... Oh, remember he was chasing the guy through, like, the skyscraper and on the crane? No, and... again, I thought we were talking about The Office. The episode, the Parker yeah. episode. Yeah, no. They did it in Bond. That was his first his I... first foray into Bond was chasing... They were, like, Haiti or something like that. Or... Oh, yes, 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 yes. The, o the opening scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Just took me way too... It was, be it was because that was, like, the number one thing in like internet culture at that time and they were trying to capitalize off of it by like what i didn't know that yeah i was in like sixth grade when that came out maybe no well oh six i thought you were saying six years old i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't remember it was mid 2000s i think maybe seventh grade i don't know um but who, so you don't know who you'd want to see so mm -hmm. There's no one actor that I, you know, that I don't really care about actors and actresses. Well, Bond over the years has evolved anyways. Okay. I never saw the originals. The whole, the whole, uh, like, Playboy thing yeah, didn't really I come never, about until, like... I never saw that. Connery, I think. Which I never saw. I only saw Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig as Bonds. Terrible blue screen windsurfing or green screen windsurfing. <laughs> so, um, but just like uh, Dahmer and his whatever the FBI character that he played, the character, the guy, I still can't remember his name, the other Quicksilver. I don't know who you're talking about. The guy that played Dahmer. What FBI character? What are you talking about? From that, from Mindhunter. Was it? Yeah, that was him. Wasn't it him? No, it wasn't. No, that was somebody else. 
what was he what else was he in that we just we because we watched two shows of his back to back east town yeah yeah, 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 yeah. killed after what the third episode yeah the county detective i was like what are you talking about fbi (laughs) guy see finally get in your brain it's all blending together yeah um well i was hoping you were going to have an opinion on bond sorry but daniel craig is probably not going to come back sorry no opinion here are you going to go and watch deadpool 3 I already know you're going to drag me to it. I don't even know if I want to go to the theaters anymore. Like, I really enjoyed going to the theaters when there was nobody there. And now it's just always crowded. Um, like, beginning of COVID and all that stuff, like when the theaters were still open and then as they were opening back up and there was like three people in the theater, primo. I used to intentionally go to a rundown theater in Elkhart. I avoided the two, like like how we have Stone and... Um, Mayfair. Yeah. I would avoid those two, mm-hmm. and I would go to the like dollar theater equivalent in Elkhart mm-hmm. because I knew nobody else was going to be there on opening night. I would literally go with like one or two other friends or even sometimes by myself just so... I didn't have to sit in the theater with anybody else watching the movie. And I could get the exact seat that I wanted. Didn't have to be next to somebody eating too loud or spilling their drink or kicking my seat. Or the last busy movie you went to? Batman? That was two years ago. Did I go to the theater and watch that? Yes, you dragged me. Oh, the Batman. Robert Battinson. Mm-hmm. I just saw a meme the other day about that. They're like, it took him 12 years to, or it was like worst vampire ever. It took him 12 years to become a bat. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> did you ever watch those movies? Twilight? Mm. Yeah, I didn't either. I think he did good as Batman. Cause that's like his movie of Batman is more in line with the actual like detective comics. Okay. And like, the people that don't like that version of him, of Batman, not of Robert Pattinson, are people that only ever consumed the movies. Like the the cartoons that I grew up with as a kid were closer to that movie than the movies that we watch nowadays. I think the plot of that Batman is probably one of the best. I don't know that the actor was necessarily the best. Penguin's gonna have a show on HBO. I think it's. It, I think it comes out this year. So, uh, your favorite boy from, from the Lobster. Thank you. I do not want to watch that. Why? It's just gonna be like the like a crime show essentially. There's not gonna be like there's no superheroes. Batman's not gonna be in it. It's just gonna be like how he became like this crime kingpin. I'm sorry, but you can't. You want Danny DeVito to come back, don't you? You can't. I never saw that one. I told you that. Oh. You can't say Kingpin talking about a penguin. Just can't take it seriously. Okay. Can't. I know you love the actor, though. What is it? It's the, uh, he was the coach in the Gentleman movie. Um, the lobster. Sean Connery? No, Sean Connery's dead. I mean, um, no, different Sean. Sean, uh... I don't think his name's Sean at all. Really? No. <sighs> this is going to bother me. I can't see anything. Um... The Lobster, if you guys have never seen that, is hilarious. She hated it, but I thought it was... It was terrible, terrible. It was... It was... It's... The dry humor is so funny. So is, uh... Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. He just looks like a Sean. You're just you're you're calling all Irish yes. people Sean. Yes. Wow. Yes. I'm gonna tell Streeter. Whatever, I don't care. Everybody from Ireland's name is Sean now, and it has to be spelled S H A W N. No, no, no. S E A N. That's seen. I know. I think is the the only. No, that's gonna bother me too. The what only is the original. The only spelling. The only scenes that I know. Um, one of them was our PLL Clark NCO. He's a 
Uh, he was one of my mentors, a black guy from St. Louis. And then one that I went to high school with who yep. has a ski last It's actually, it's neither. It's S-H-A-U-N yeah. is the authentic like the, Irish. Like that moron on social media. What? Sean King. Okay. He's, a, he's a terrible person. We'll okay. just leave it at that. Okay. But then the S-H-A-W-N and S. E A and spellings and derivatives of that. Gotcha. Apparently. I had one more thing. Cool. It's 55 minutes in. I got one more thing. Go for it. What's up your sleeve? I got to remember it now. Did you take your riddle into I did. I did. Remember? Yep. It's been, this topic though has been like on the tip of my tongue this entire time. Oh, um, Jake Paul versus Tyson. You can just talk by yourself because I'm completely out of that conversation. Okay, so I wanted to bring this up in the YouTube thing. It was going to, you know, kind of all roll together. Yeah. Um, so he's been fighting, fighting. They all appear to be fixed fights, and they probably are. Um, these boxing matches against different athletes. And now he has a, a fight booked against Tyson in July. So who is this guy? He's a YouTuber. He's one of the, I don't ever watch his content, but he's based. He's popular? Yeah. Okay. I think actually the little ones might watch some of his stuff. He he blew up um, on YouTube, him and his brother, because they went to, um, I can't think of the, there's a forest in Japan where people go to commit suicide. Oh. And they filmed it. Yeah, they were like canceled for it, but they made a comeback. They made an apology and they came back. Okay. So his pivot away from YouTube has been podcast and boxing and fighting and stuff like that. Okay. And now Tyson is like 60. Right. He's like 20. I still wouldn't want to get punched out by he's like, 60 year old Tyson. But he's like 28. Tyson is in his old man strength era. Still a very how big would you say this kid is? What, what's your? I think he's like he's like roughly my height, but probably not your weight. Like a little string being good. No, he's because he's been leg day? no because he's been like training. I well, I don't know about leg day, but he's not like he's not like scrawny. But he's he's one of those weirdos that walks around wearing like baggy clothes and stuff. So he's kind of deceptive in some ways. But even in baggy clothes, you can tell if somebody's fat. You can't necessarily tell how. If they have muscle on Yeah. Them. You you can tell if they're like, you know, like how broad are your shoulders and, you know, if you have pecs or anything like that. But you can't tell if like they're chiseled and defined or if they, right. yeah. But it's kind of a, he's kind of a moron. And. Kind of. Oh, yeah. Big, big time. Big, big time. Big time. Um. Like, I can't help but think it's a whole publicity stunt and that Tyson's going to throw the fight for the money. And, of course, there's all propaganda coming out about it. And they're like, Tyson said that he didn't sign up for the money. He's going to end the guy's career. Like, it just sounds like it just sounds like he's going to throw the fight. Him coming out and saying that stuff screams to me that they they want it to look like a big deal. They want it to... I'm not, when is it scheduled to happen? Like July 20th or something like that. Are you counting down the days? No. I have no idea how many days away that is. you to watch it? No, no, it's on Netflix. What? Yeah. Why? Because Netflix wants to get into that kind of stuff. All these, all this, all the streaming providers now are trying to find new ways to make money because they know they've saturated the market. Now they have to find new and alternative ways. Well... The amount of money that Netflix is paying for that, they should have brought season three of Mindhunters back. I'm that cool was with a that. much better show cool. and way to spend money. So, yes, I want to see Tyson beat his ass in the first round. I don't, don't like the first ten seconds. Most people don't like it when they, pay, especially when they pay. They don't want to pay. Like for UFC or a pay per view for boxing or a couple seconds. yeah, because it's expensive. Right. It's 
I, I'm sure it's upwards of like eighty or hundred dollars now, and and of course, or a fee to get into a a, a bar or whatever. That yeah, they're paying for yeah, it, yeah. So, and the fighters know that too. Mm-hmm. But like, if I was a fighter, I don't care. I don't want to get hit. Like, I want to end the fight as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much money you paid. Yeah, but but you're you're suspecting that Tyson is not going to make that happen. Yeah, no. That this kid is going to live on and make yeah. lots of dollars. Yeah, I, one of one of his higher profile fights recently, I think, ended in a draw. How long ago? Just a couple of years ago. Okay. Which is communism to me. Any ties communism. We could talk about that in another episode. Oh, God. He talks about that every single soccer Saturday. Don't end in a tie. Yeah. Only communists play soccer and end in ties. Yeah. You know what else? You know what else is proof that soccer is communism? The U.S. women's national team takes home more money from the men's national team than they do that they generate themselves. Communism. On that note. On that note, visit he's wrong, she's right dot com. Check out the website. Leave some comments. Leave some feedback. Um, we have a section on the homepage of the website now where we will feature comments from YouTube. So if you leave a comment that I like, it might get featured on the website. Um, that he likes. Well, okay, that both of us like. You no, can... Only he likes. He stated that as fact. Only he likes. And eventually there will be perks to this. To pander to Andrew only. There's there's no perks to this yet. But, I mean, other than the clout, you can say that you were on our website. Um... Visit nonaphelps.com to see pictures of Nona and also to buy insurance or reshop your insurance if you in would North like. North Carolina and South Carolina. If, if you live in if you're, states, please just. If you're, if you're a service member and you have USA and you want to figure out how to get away from USA, Nona can help you make that happen. Um, USA has always been a technology company. And so those rate hikes are basically what we talked about in the other episodes, buying customer data. The banking side, I still don't have a problem with, but the insurance side sucks, which USA is an insurance company. It's not a bank. Mm, So the bank might start. Well, they did. We used to have um, the uh, like cash rewards or point like on our debit cards. We used to have that. They took that away from us. I'll never forget. They took that away from me. Could you imagine earning points on your debit card, not just on your credit card? I have a local credit union. I think I do on something too, but I don't know what it is. I know my credit cards do, but I don't know what my, I don't think my debit cards do. I think somebody's, I don't know, everybody's bringing stuff back and getting rid of stuff. Lowe's now is going to have a rewards program for the my Lowe's people, mm-hmm. which means that product prices are going to increase because that's what that always means. They can justify it by telling you, oh, you'll earn perks because they know people won't use the perks. Most people won't. Um, anyway. Visit lemaxmedia.com. That's spelled L-E-M-A-C-K-S-M-E-D-I-A, since you guys don't know how to spell my name. lemaxmedia.com. It'll be linked in the comments or in the bot or the description, whatever. Um, so we'll know if helps.com. So will he's wrong, she's right. Check out Veteran Wiki and... Dot org. Yeah, veteranwiki.org. Um, check it out. Let us know what you think. Stuff coming there Don't soon. Get me to it. The crew is working on some grant write-ups and stuff right now that I need to read and review for Jake. He sent it to me over the weekend. And I still haven't gotten to it. So maybe stop filming and take care of that. Well, that's why that's why I have a president and vice president of the organization. They have the autonomy to do everything, and then I'm just there as the. Figurehead. Yeah, basically. Princess. I guess we're going to sign off. This has been episode five. Five. Did I say that at the beginning? But didn't you film episode five when Rick came over yesterday? I told you to. He was busy. He was busy and he was in uniform. He was in uniform. No, actually. So we actually, we talked about it. He was like, yeah, no, we can't. We're not even like supposed to be on social media and like apparently they're pretty strict about that stuff. So that's 
I haven't said where he works. He can say that if he wants to. If he's ever can say where you work either. No, I know. I'm just he could just cover up his logo with just, all this beautiful painter's tape that we're holding the cords he, together. He told me how much their franchise makes a month. Yeah. Yes, yes. Per month. Just, how, just how many, specifically last month. I don't how, know how much. How per many month. employees? I don't know. Didn't ask. Say one point five million. Sixty. Sixty million. Yes. In one month. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, I'm in long business. <laughs> All right. All those old people. Thank you. All right, Johnny. You need to get back into that business yeah. and uh, get that ball rolling so you can be making $60 million. Well, now they've got o uh, outside-the-box properties. OTB Props. OTBProps.com. Check that out. There's nothing really there yet because... Already. He's with while well, he's waiting on permits and approvals and stuff, but yeah. Anyways, find us on social media, leave a comment on YouTube, subscribe if you want to see me in a bikini on yes. April Fool's Day. You've got 11 days, 11 days, 11 days to a thousand YouTube followers. To see Andrew in a beautiful bikini, yep. And we'll talk about communism on the next episode. I love you, Nona. I love you too, Andrew. She says reluctantly. Bye. Bye.